time comes, don't postpone it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today, the video is going to be about fitness. I posted in my story asking a poll of who wanted to see a fitness video versus seeing a beauty video and fitness won by 66%. So here we are. Basically, I'm just going to give you a history about what I've done in the sport, how I started, answer some of the questions from the Q&A, and just go from there. For those who don't know me, my name is Barbara Lee. I am a resident of Houston, Texas, and I am a competitive powerlifter. I didn't realize how many people don't know what powerlifting is. When I tell someone what I do, they see my traps or they see my arms and they're like, oh, you work out, you must be a bodybuilder. No offense to bodybuilders because I've tried posing. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that what they do is easy. I can't even. So kudos to bodybuilders. As far as Olympic weightlifters, we do some lifts similar, but when it comes to throwing anything towards my face or at my head or over my head, it's a no for me. So powerlifting is strictly three lifts, squat, bench, and deadlift. I decided to do a voiceover for this next part. I trained deadlifts on Tuesday, and I wanted to add some of the clips from my session to give you guys an idea and a visual of what exactly a deadlift is. I've also included some of the accessory ex exercises that we do to help support building a bigger deadlift. It's not just about the main work doing a deadlift. There are also other muscles involved, of course, that help to build your deadlift. So we also train hamstrings and our back for a complete deadlift workout. The first lift that I'm doing is a conventional deadlift. My feet are close together and I am putting my arms on the outside of my legs and pulling the bar up. Till I am fully locked out. The second stance is called a sumo deadlift where your feet are wider and you put your hands in between your legs and lock out in that manner. I personally prefer to do a conventional deadlift. That's where I feel the strongest and honestly it's also because a sumo deadlift is a lot harder to master technically and if you are out of position in any kind of way when you start there's a high chance you're not gonna finish that lift. With any exercise that we do, we always work up to the highest weight that we're going to do. We never just jump in with the heaviest weight and start with that. You need to get your body ready and get your muscles primed to be able to handle the top load. My top set this day was 295 pounds and I did that for three sets of five reps. Coming off of surgery and still doing rehab, I'm trying to find the best way to work in my strength training, training my main lifts without going overboard and being able to do my rehab and not have my knee swell up and I'm out of commission for a couple of days. Another reason why I added voiceover for this part is because we listen to a lot of ratchet trap, whatever you want to call it, music. There's a lot of curse words and I don't feel like dealing with YouTube and their copyright crap. So you get to hear my voice, but if you ever train with us in person, then you get to hear what we really listen to. Here I added a few clips of the accessory exercises that we do. Um, this first exercise is a stiff leg or Romanian deadlift. It targets your hamstrings and your lower back and your glutes if you do it right. Another exercise that I added is rows. And a lot of these exercises that you'll see I'm doing with dumbbells and bands because this can give you an idea of stuff you can do at home and not have to be in the gym. So you have no excuses. This next exercise is called an upright row and I have shoulder issues. I have a 80% tear in my rotator cuff in my right shoulder. So I do these with a light band. I'm going to link below in the comment section where you can get a set of bands on Amazon and they'll come in different sizes so you can work your way up for the resistance to give yourself a harder workout. This last exercise is called a Superman, and I do this on the ball to keep my knee off the ground. 
I started powerlifting back in 2013. My first meet was in January. It was a home meet and I had my entire family come, all my friends. I had been training and let's just say the method of training that I was using did not carry over to the platform at all. I was overtraining. I was also heavily relying on my trainer. And when it was time to get on the platform, I basically looked like a deer in headlights. I bombed out my first meet. I didn't read the rule book, didn't know what was going on, and I missed all my squats. Turned around and I missed all my bench presses. I put in my attempts too early. So once you put your attempt in, you can't change it. And I put in all my attempts at the beginning, which I don't know why they let me do that, but it happened. So I missed my opening squat and still had to go up. And then I missed my second squat and still had to go up and wait. It was a nightmare. And after bench, I pretty much sat in the hallway and cried. But then deadlifts came and that, answering one of the questions that I got from the Q&A has always been my favorite lift. So for me, it's time to party at that point. Nothing left to do, but leave everything on the platform, finish strong. I finished the meet with a PR, I pulled 290 pounds. I weighed in at about 130 pounds. So I was excited about that. And that one lift is what kept me motivated to come back and do another meet. The second meet I decided to do was three months after the first meet and I successfully completed that meet. I learned a lot of, from my mistakes in the first meet, so I dropped my openers, made sure it was something I knew I could do easy so that I wouldn't be disqualified, and then I had fun after that. The crazy thing is there weren't a lot of women competing where I'm from, and I started lifting in Lafayette, Louisiana. I traveled to Baton Rouge, I traveled to Alabama, I did five meets my first year just because wherever there was a meet, I wanted to go do it. I was hooked. I got into powerlifting um, kind of by accident, actually. I started off just working out with a trainer wanting to lose weight, and then once I hit my goal weight, I decided that I needed something else to keep me competitive and to keep me pushing. That's always how I've been. So I decided to start with powerlifting and just see what happens. It takes me completely out of my comfort zone because believe it or not, I'm actually shy. So being in front of a big group of people coming to watch me and to critique me makes me nauseated. I am literally nauseated at meat. I want to puke on my first squat every single time. And then after that, the nerves kind of wear down and then the adrenaline kicks in and it's just learning how to focus that energy on the platform from there. I've also been a coach in the sport for the last three years now, and I have a great team. Um, we basically treat each other like family. We do have lifters here in Houston, but I also do online coaching for lifters across the United States. So that is something that I always wanted to do because I loved helping people and I love teaching. And so this gave me a way to do it without having to be in a school setting. So I make sure my athletes focus on technique. For us, you have to earn the weight. So if your squat is trash because your technique is falling apart when it gets heavy, we're not going any heavier until you get it right. A lot of people like to YOLO lift. I want to lift heavy. When can I max? That's not what we're about. I coach a team. Our team name is Relentless Power Systems. And we push each other to be the best that we can be, but also we take care of each other and try to make sure that we're doing things the right way. And that's very important to me. The thing to remember with any lift, no matter how much weight is on the bar, don't take it for granted. You can get hurt and a lot of people are afraid to lift because they're scared of getting hurt, but you can get hurt doing lightweight, doing it wrong. You can get hurt on a machine. You are building strength and thickening your muscles to help you be able to handle the weight. 
Someone specifically asked me how long I've been in fitness. I started working out in 2011, 2012. And again, I just wanted to lose weight. I'll insert a clip, but I was 157 pounds. And for me and how I wanted myself to look, I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't feel that was a good weight for me. So I said I wanted to get down to about 130, 135 pounds and then go from there. I got to 137 and I was happy with that. And then that's when we started powerlifting. But I was in the gym six days a week, seven days a week, one day lifting heavy and then doing burnout sets. Next day lifting heavy, then going to failure. And I always hurt. And the trainer that I worked with at the time basically said, West Side Barbell Book of Methods is what we are gonna train and that is what we're gonna to listen to and there is nothing else. So I squatted in flats, I only used chucks for every lift and I started having issues with my hips and my back and next thing you know, I find out about Olympic shoes, lifting in heeled shoes for squats and things improved for me. So it's really important that if you're going to get into a sport and you don't know anything about it, make sure that you find someone that is knowledgeable and not just book smart, but has experience. I do have a USPA coaching certification, so I have some book smarts, but I've been competing for seven, eight years now. So I have a lot of platform experience and I've learned from a lot of mistakes. I've had other coaches and I've learned from some really great people. That is something that you really need to make sure you check into before you hire a coach. If you're new to it, just have fun. Don't worry about hitting certain numbers. Don't be scared saying you can't start whatever you want to compete in until you get to a certain level. None of that matters. You always have a place where you have to start and you're going to look back on it and say, wow, look how far I've come. I started off squatting the bar. I started off being excited about, oh my God, I finally squatted 135 pounds. Now I'm happy to say that there are some guys that I can lift more than. I'm not scared to slam leg with the big boys at all. Let's go. My best squat now, I guess I could tell you my best numbers. My best squat raw, which is just in knee sleeves, a belt, and wrist wraps is 424 pounds. My best bench press is 259 pounds. And then my best deadlift, which again is my favorite, is 501 pounds. This sport has given me so much confidence and it's made me love me as a person, mentally, physically, and emotionally. I have found that the confidence I've gained in the gym has transferred to so many aspects of my life and that's why I'll never quit the sport. I'll be one of those 70 year olds still out there lifting and celebrating like it's a brand new PR because it is. Whatever age you're at, you can have fun and you can do this. I am pretty proud of the fact that I managed to pull 500 pounds conventional and then rebuild and pull 500 pounds um, as a sumo lifter. So when asked what is one of my biggest accomplishments or one of the things that I'm proud of, I would say that I've been able to say that I have tied my max number both styles of lifting. I love coaching a team. I love having a group of people to train with. We each hold each other accountable. They motivate me just as much as I motivate them. And we are from all different backgrounds, all different ages. I have people across the U.S. One of my clients here is a 53-year-old woman who is still breaking records to this day. So don't tell me you're too old. Don't tell me you're too big. Don't tell me you don't want to lift weights because you think you're going to look manly. We can do both. Fitness chicks that are Instagram models or fitness models, those women lift weights. How do you think you get curves? There is muscle under there. You just have to learn how to do it the right way. So make sure that you find someone who's knowledgeable, not just book smart, but also they have to have some experience and that person will help guide you. Just make sure you are very clear about what you want. 
and whoever's working with you, be it a friend or a personal trainer that you hire or a coach, if you decide you want to get an R sport, just make sure that you communicate with them well, because that's going to be how you make the best progress. Whatever you decide that you want to do, don't be scared. Being stuck, a lot of people feel like they're stuck. Oh, I've done this for so long this way, and it's the only way I know. Or it's always been like this for me. Obesity runs in my family. Same thing with me. My mom, my grandmother, both obese, both had diabetes. My grandmother had diabetes at the age of 16 years old. So we have heart conditions, we have high cholesterol, we have so many illnesses that come from being unhealthy. So this, being here, training, coaching, helping others is my way of not only keeping myself in the sport and keeping myself motivated to be healthy, but also to help others not fall victim to things that are recurring in their life with their family and they feel they just have to be a product of their environment. You don't. You're not stuck. You're never stuck. You just have to make up your mind and say, I want something different. And when you're ready to do that, truly ready and tired of where you are, this will be a breath of fresh air and you won't be scared anymore. Don't be scared of lifting weights. Don't be scared of going to the gym. You can't live life scared no matter what because the time's going to pass and you're still going to be where you are. So if you're interested in fitness and you want to hire a coach, shameless plug, I do coach. We can do personal training, we can do powerlifting, whatever you want to do. But honestly, just find a support system. That's something that I didn't have when I started and it made things really hard for me. And so I know and preach all the time how important it is to have that. One of the last questions that I'll address in this video is someone asked me what my favorite competition was and why. I would honestly have to say that my favorite competition was Boss of Bosses in California back in August of last year. I had my best raw competition there to date. I put up the best numbers in my squat and my deadlift that I've ever done. And I ended up winning first place in my weight class and second overall. I unfortunately have this as my most memorable meet because celebrating my deadlift, I jumped and I stomped hard and ruptured my quad tendon. So I blew my knee out basically after I deadlifted 500 pounds. I ended up having to have surgery. I had surgery in September for my quad tendon. And then after, when we did the MRI for my quad tendon, my doctor also found that I have not had an ACL for who knows how long. I only remember hurting my knee back in high school. I played volleyball and I remember being on crutches for a few weeks in high school, but that's the only time I ever remember severely hurting my knee. So I basically competed my entire career without an ACL. But believe me when I tell you, I'm not done. I definitely plan on making a comeback to the sport. Um, unfortunately, it's gonna take a little longer than I hoped, but that's because I'm impatient. Uh, so I plan on being back on the platform sometime next year. I'm not sure when yet, but believe me when I tell you, there will be a lot of hype about it because my squad is big and they're just excited for me to return as I am. So I'm gonna continue to make videos. I'm gonna try to do two a week. I'm gonna do one fitness and I'm gonna do one beauty because that's my other passion and I get geeked up whenever I get something new or find something that I love. So stay tuned and I'm excited to have you here on this journey with me. See you guys soon. Bye.